Hello everyone. Welcome to the UI Dev Guide. So we will be talking about Angular interpretations uh, in this video. This would be the part two. Uh, we have already released part one. Uh, you can find that in the description. So let's get started with the part two. So whatever question uh, which were asked me in the previous interpretation, so that I'll be sharing in this video. So let's get started. So first question is, what is ng container and uh, and when we use it. So basically, the interviewer is trying to ask, ask you. So whenever you are creating some div and you are using some ng for and ng if, so at that time we are not able to access the both the directive in the single element. So that is why this uh, ng container helps us to create a uh, another uh, div level kind of thing. So that is why uh, interviewer maybe most of time ask why we use ng container. So the second question is, uh, what is ng template? So when we use it, so suppose you have something if else kind of thing. So at that time, we prefer to use ng, ng template uh, every time. So third question is that, so uh, most of you guys are aware about the interceptor when we use in the project and why we use. So the counter question is that, so can we use a multiple interceptor in the single project? So we can use it and how can we, uh, uh, how can we integrate it into the project? They are, they are trying to ask you, so how can we include into the ng module? So what are the ways we need to follow over there? Do we need to add a multi equal to true or not? Or suppose you are creating multiple interceptors, so which interceptor will be triggered first, then another one when we'll call. So if you have some time, so you can try around it. So it would be a great experience if you are trying to create a simple project for the multiple interceptor. So the next question is, what is angular.json? angular.json file. So the interviewer will ask you, so what is the use of angular.json basically? So you can mention that the we have the output directory over there or some we have the schema over there already. So if you are trying to access some bootstrap, at that time we have to include our script inside the whatever required the script of dependencies for the bootstrap and uh, style also we need to add. So you can mention those as well. So next question is that what is observable in the, uh, why we use observable basically? So this is the commonly asked question into the pro in the, in the in the interview. So most of interview will ask about the observable and subscription. Why we use it? What is the advantage of the observable over the promise? And what is the difference between both? So this is the common one question. So you can prepare for it. So how can you create a observable from some stream of the data or something? You have some array. Then how can we create observable kind of the thing from the array? So you can go through with the RHS operator. So the yeah. So the next question is RxJS. Why we use it? So basically, it's kind of the reactive programming language for us. So with Angular, we can use it. So we have to use a multiple operators to while writing our application. So we usually use a pipe operator to add a multiple add a multiple uh, provider uh, add multiple operators of the RxJS. So for that reason, we use a pipe. So basically, they will try to uh, access you. Uh, they will try to ask you regarding the question why we use a pipe over there then how can we use a map then switch map then uh, they will ask you regarding the question related to the operator what are the operators we can use some type of the situation they can give you a multiple apis then how can we suppose you have three apis and you want to collect the, all the data at the single time with observable so what what operator you should use over there so that kind of the thing they will try to ask you the next question is react versus angular so basically they will try to if you know about the react and if you have added the react in your resume they will definitely ask you about this question so what is the advantage of the react over the angular and what is the uh, advantage of the angular over the react so this is kind of the vice versa question usually interview will ask you if you added the react and angular in your resume so yeah so the next question is promise versus observable so as we discuss about the both the things in the uh, previous slide so they will try to access, ask you the what is the use of promise when we use a promise over the observable. So suppose you have some observable kind of data and you want to create a promise kind of thing. thing. So what, uh, what, how can you convert the promise to observable or observable to promise? So and what is the basic use of it, both of these? So that kind of thing they will ask you. And while talking about the sharing your data into the multiple, multiple components at that time they will act, uh, usually ask you the how can we share the data in the sibling components or the not the interrelated component at that time you should know about the subject what are the different type of subject do we have and uh, how can we achieve the communication between the uh, multiple components with the help of the subject so you should know about it so we have subject behavioral subject then async type also over there async subject kind of thing and then we replace subject so 
subject and behavioral subject is different that the behavioral subject will take some uh, some initial value but subject don't have so and the in the replace subject you can use the buffer kind of the thing over there so that level of the data it can be stored for you as a previous value for us so that can help you uh, you can read it about it then what is the use of async pipe and what is the advantage and disadvantage so basically async pipe is nothing kind of the it's kind of the subscription it get automatically subscribed the observable something happened to the observable then it get automatically subscribed every time so the advantage is that we don't need to uh, we don't need to unsubscribe it basically it get automatically unsubscribed so usually we create a subscription into the component level then we need to unsubscribe into the ngt store whenever we are moving to another component so uh, it would be the great if you are doing those if you are not doing then you should follow these uh, steps for your angular project so this is a uh, kind of the it will help you to improve the performance of the project as well and kind of the disadvantage is that so whenever something happen to the any observable into the component level it try to access that observable data every time in the component level, in the html level so that is why uh, most of time we don't use async by basically so the next question is that uh, how can we access a multiple ng module into the project so this question comes to whenever you are creating some shared module or a lazy lazy loading kind of thing so how can we use it basically so you will usually create a lazy module in our project so at that time also the ng module one file ng module file is created for your module so that module file will include in our ng module file so uh, they will try to ask you so can we create exact ng module file twice in the our project so you can try around it so you will get to know about it so how can we do that and uh, when you are creating the sharing component component kind of the module at that time we use ng module over there that we include into the our main ng module for the, for, in the src so that is the kind of the part over there so yeah so the next question is related to the lazy loading so exactly what happens in the lazy loading so most of time uh, uh, people say that the, it is kind of the demand whenever something called at that time only it get loaded to the dom so basically the counter question would be so when your application get built and the dist file is created for you so the bundle file is created on that time so at that time your module is there inside or not so this is the counter question for you so this they will ask you usually ask they so you can try around it so you can create a two lazy module on the one eager module and you can try around to create that bundle as a dist file or something you can do with ng build and you can try to load your modules into the as a lazy loading so you will get to know about that uh, that module is already there but it is not loaded into the dom so that is why because of that only they will ask you uh, yeah so the next question is related to the rxjs operator so they will try to ask you the what operator you have used in your project and how you use it and how you figure out so which operator we should use in our project so uh, they will give you some scenarios over there and they will ask you which operator you prefer to use right now so this is kind of the some question they will ask you regarding rxjs operator and the next question is regarding the guard so basically we have multiple guards over there so kind of uh, next question is that i have already written over here the auth guard so the cards can be help you to prevent your access or some kind of things suppose you have one form and you are creating going to the another form so at that time also you can check that you have something done into the form and do you want to continue or not so if you do continue then your form data will be lapsed over there you will move to the another page or you can create a login kind of things with the auth guard so basically uh, it can have a component level as well or the module level as well so they will try to ask you what guards we can create in our project and uh, what is the need of those and another thing so can we create as a module level as well and if you are able to say yes then what we have to use for it so they will try to ask you regarding such kind of questions as well so yeah so next slide is related to the aot and the jit so basically they will try to ask you the regarding the question so if you are creating the jit compilation so what will happen in your dom and if you are creating aot then what exactly happens basically they will try to ask you like that so you can mention that the aot is a time of ahead basically so it will be having a pre compile uh, bundle for us so it will not go to the compilation again into the browser so it will helps us to improve the performance of the project so and another thing over there so we can discuss in the some of the next videos so we have too many things with the aot so this is the kind of the small kind of things over there 
okay so the next question is related to the form so basically what kind of the form you are aware about it and uh, what kind of the form do you prefer to use in your project so basically they will try to ask you the template driven form or a reactive form so basically if you are using the if you have multiple uh, form fields or you have some nested form fields so usually we don't go with the template driven form we follow the reactive form basically we have more control on the form with the help of the uh, form builder and all so if you say a reactive form they would definitely ask you what kind of the things we need to use before creating the reactive form so what kind of the modules we need then what kind of the packages we need for that so we use a form builder then form control then what is the use of the form control and how can we set the value to the form then how can we dis dispatch some values from there suppose you are doing something change into the some fields and what uh, life cycle hooks you trigger over there so uh, you can read about the forms so that kind of the question they will ask okay so okay so this question is mostly uh, in two three inter question they ask me suppose you have one uh, angular project and you want to load google map service in your project basically i have written like that google map okay so right now they have multiple packages over there so we can include directly in uh, we can install google map uh, angular google map and you can add that module into your component level uh, in the module level basically now you want to load your script again so we have two ways we can use into the ng uh, index.html and if they say that whenever you are going to this component only at that time only that google map should load so basically they will ask you so add a script dynamically into your component when that component get triggered so this question you can read about it so you will go, got to know about too many things when you are doing such kind of the thing so yeah so the next question is the form child and form root what is different between both so this is regarding your ng module kind of thing so whenever you are creating a routing for the uh, src level or the app level at that time we use a for root basically and if you are creating some nested routing with the help of the ng module suppose you have created two modules at that time they will automatically create it as a for child basically we have one root and inside that we have this child so this is the difference between both and you can check it more than so what what they are trying to ask you or counter questions also might be there too many okay so the last question is related to how can we deploy our web app to the any kind any kind of the uh, github then here we have then netfly something is over there so how can we deploy those kind of things so if you have done that then you can mention that i have done like that something kind of thing then if you are not done then you can mention that i have not done it but i am trying to learn or something so these are the 20 questions i'll be sharing in this post so too many questions are over there so i will be covering some couple of questions for the javascript as well then html css as well and about the react js as well so most question will be coming to in the couple of